We're here in Winter Ranch um, at the terminus of the migration corridor for the Cody Elk herd. It's a herd that's about 6,000 uh, strong. Most of the herd's migratory and they make one of the longest migrations of elk that we know about in the lower 48 states. That migration is from these kind of fairly large uh, archetypal Wyoming cattle ranches all the way into some of the remotest wilderness uh, in the Yellowstone ecosystem. The things um, that's important to understand is these huge migrating herds of ungulates bring challenges for uh, people who are trying to make a living or um, manage uh, property using livestock grazing. They bring predators behind them and they carry diseases, particularly elk. Conservation groups and sportsmen's groups and, and agencies and others want to see these herds conserved, but conserving them brings costs. And so a big question is how do we share those costs? If you're 50% over the elk goal for population and there's more elk, they're, they're, they're harming you. There's many, many more here than there used to be. The increased elk numbers on this ranch has something to do with predators and the reintroduction of wolves and the increase of bears. I think they come here to seek a safe place in the lower country. They're moving them down here during the brucellosis transfer time. If you get one cow infected, your entire herd is quarantined and you lose substantial, substantial marketing opportunities. In our ranching operations, we deal with the game and fish almost daily. We've had a good relationship with them for a long time. When Eric was added here uh, as Bighorn Basin brucellosis biologist, that was, that was a great step forward. And so we just started working with him. He's a breath of fresh air. <laughs> So brucellosis is a bacterial disease caused by brucella abortus and was first found in livestock and through the U.S. government's brucellosis eradication program started in the 1930s as well as pasteurization the disease was essentially eliminated from livestock and the disease concerns in humans were also effectively eliminated. Now the disease was ultimately found in elk and bison of the greater Yellowstone ecosystem and over time, we've, we've seen uh, an increased spillover from, from elk, particularly elk, and bison in, into uh, livestock. Keeping the population at objective is one of the best things that we can do for trying to prevent spread to other, to other areas. Uh, where they, where they um, mowed it, but it runs up into, there's sort of a saddle. Mm -hmm. bridge, and then it turns and runs up. There's a little bit of pole top that's up on top. You can just barely make it out, but it keeps running up and along the, the top of the ridge and just continues on, on to the west. The fence is supposed to be more porous for elk, uh, and uh, what you would get before is they'd all just pile up here and the calves couldn't get through and they'd all the cows would jump the fence and run and the calves would all be here and then they'd all come back because they weren't going to leave their calves and, and uh, uh, then they'd end up tearing down the fence uh, and so um, I mean hopefully this is more porous and they can move on. And so it just made sense that if it works for migration, it should work for being able to keep elk away from livestock. And for migrations, uh, a lot of the fence that's been replaced was woven wire fence, because this was a sheep ranch in the past, and the calves couldn't get through the woven wire fence, and, and the antelope can't get through it either. I've watched antelope follow that fence for miles to find a gate where they could and there's a pretty substantial antelope migration here too. The funding sources for the project were um, pr provided primarily through the NRCS and through the Nature Conservancy. 
and the BLM, their their sections, all the fence that's a, that's through them, all the materials they they pay for all that. I know the Matichu Conservation District. Uh, I know Roy Carhu at the NRCS, and and these guys just kind of took the ball and did it. Well, I've been doing this 50 years, and. And when I first started, it was pretty antagonistic. And uh, I, I just felt that I needed to get along with these people. What's so important generally about the idea of partnership is uh, we have sort of conservation groups and sportsmen's groups who want to see these abundant wildlife being able to move freely on the landscape. And so it's very logical that those costs are shared or that those costs are uh, covered by the folks who want to see those wildlife persist. And so there simply isn't a way to think about the conservation of these you know, national um, state resources uh, without partnership between private landowners and public agencies and, and the public at large. That's how conservation works in this part of the West. Dwight Eisenhower said when he had a place at Valley Forge that you're just a steward for your lifetime and you just well do the best you can. <laughs>